coming and taking time out of your day to be here. My name is Rachel. I was the safety intern this summer. I'm going to Slippery Rock University and I will be entering my senior year. And I'm going to graduate with my bachelor's in safety management in December. So I'll be talking a little bit about myself, about the company, my experience, my takeaways, and then finally my main proposal. So to start off about me, so if you didn't know, I came here from Pennsylvania in a small town off of Interstate 80. I'm about two hours north of Pittsburgh, two hours from Erie, and two hours from Ohio. And my town is really small. There's around like 3,000 people there, so everyone knows everyone's business, and it's hard to keep secrets. And so coming here, it was like a really big change for me. Cause like I've been to the city before, but I've never lived in a city. So just getting used to everything that goes on here was kind of hard, but it was a great experience. And then you can also see that my least favorite time of year is winter because I hate the snow. And that probably took like 45 minutes to clean off. <laughs> and then my favorite time of year is fall because of the nice weather, the leaves changing colors, and we also have a giant festival in my town during fall, and it's like the biggest thing that happens. So it's a pretty big deal. And then a little bit about me. So this is a picture of my family, and my sister, my dad, and my mom. And then I also have a cat, his name is Cheeto, and he is like my child, and he never leaves me alone. And then, um, <clears throat> A little bit about my childhood. Um, you can see I didn't like shirts very much, but luckily I broke out of that habit and I wear one now. And also, I never sat still, so that's why partly the reason why I didn't have time to wear a shirt. I was too busy doing other things. It just was not a priority for me. And I also, like Caroline, liked to wear things that were too big for me, for some reason. <laughs> Um, now, some of my favorite things to do in my free time is go outdoors, so whether that be camping, riding a bike, longboarding, or fishing, I just like being outdoors because it really calms me down and it just makes me feel better. I also like to paint, edit on Final Cut Pro, cook and bake, and then just travel anywhere that I can. Um, I like going to hockey games with my sister. It's one of our favorite things to do together. I also have an on-campus job back at school. I work with intramural sports, and I've met a lot of my friends through that, and we also make our own teams. And it's a great way for me to get my workouts in because sometimes I'm not the best at keeping up with exercising. <laughs> And I also just like having game nights, hanging out with my friends, and exploring new places. So now I'll get on to a little analysis of the company. So there are multiple offices um, around the state of California. There's headquarters, which is where we are. There's the division and construction services downtown. And then there's Visalia in Fresno. And the company is also looking to expand out around California and also outside of California to all the different job markets in different states. And it was the eighth largest electrical contract contractor in California in 2021 and also the 80th largest electrical contractor in the United States as of 2021. So now a little bit about AC at its core. So the core values here are a big reason of why I wanted to come work here because some of the core values I also hold myself. So that really drew me to coming out here for my internship. So starting off with safety, obviously this one is really important to me because I'm going to school for it and I'm here working in the safety department. The safety department here is always looking to provide a safe work environment for our employees and also sharing our knowledge and giving them the correct equipment so they can perform their job safely. And we're obviously looking for zero OSHA reportables with safety. Next is knowledge. So everyone here wants to learn more and more every day. 
They are also really quick to share their knowledge and by continual learning and ongoing training, we provide the best solutions to our customers through our work. Then there's integrity, so this has to do with our character and the business is run with great character and honesty and our customers can see that in every facet of the business. Then there's quality, so we provide the best workmanship possible to our customers and we also provide them this quality while maintaining a value for them. Then we have professionalism. So this has to do with respect. People here treat each other with respect and they also treat them in a way that they, de they deserve. And we also interact with our customers in a respectful manner and that helps to, for us to build a professional relationship with them. And then there's service. So we're always providing the best service possible to the people we're doing work for. And obviously it's a goal to exceed expectations and we exceed those expectations by our responsiveness, dependability, and our attention to detail. Then there's community. So we're always trying to give back to the community any way we, that we can. And we're also looking to build those loyal relationships with our community because and we do this by fulfilling on our promises um, about our work. And if we do a good job, if we are building those relationships with them, and they have a project later on that they need someone to do work for, they'll come back to us because they know that we give good quality work to them. Then there's family. So there's a real family culture here, and it's really great to see that a lot of people love working together. They're quick to share their knowledge and they're always available to help one another any way that they can, whether it's a problem inside of work or something going on outside of work. Just it seems like a lot of people really care for one another. And then there's desires, that's just the want to make it all happen. Everybody here wants to grow, they want themselves to grow personally and professionally, and they also want the company to grow and become better and better every single day. And a little bit about my experience now. So this is my team that I worked with this summer. I worked under Bob and I worked with Cassandra at headquarters, Jose for Bakersfield jobs, Chris at Fresno jobs. I worked with Joe at Rabbit Brush. And they all taught me so much and put up with me and they answered all my questions that I had and supported me and just really guided me while I was here. So a little bit about my responsibilities. I started off going through all the safety programs and reviewing and revising them and just making sure that they were Cal OSHA compliant and then I um, fixed any mistakes or any revisions that I did on the wiki. And then I worked on the safety bulletins so I picked topics, I picked safety topics, and then I developed a safety bulletin for each week of the year. So now there's 52 safety bulletins that are ready to go for next year. I also worked on some industrial hygiene. So I did silica sampling at the BC College and also up in Fresno. The BC College, they were drilling into the concrete ceiling, and then at Fresno, they were cutting the sidewalk concrete. So I developed a whole assessment plan on how I was going to run the silica sampling. And then I found a place to rent the equipment, got the equipment, did all the sampling, sent the samples back to the lab. And then when they got the samples back and the results, I went through and analyzed it and then like wrote up a report from my findings from the sampling. And then I also developed a draft on the safety webpage. So hopefully we can update that. Then I also did inventory of the safety hanger out back. I worked on the new hire orientation. So I went through all the PowerPoint slides and did a voiceover for them. And I also created a post test for people to take once they go through the whole orientation process. And I attended book club where we read Seven Habits of Highly Effective People and we also read Extreme Ownership. And then I also went to the
intern dinners and on the rafting trip, and those were both a really great time. And for some reason, at every intern dinner we went to, there was somebody having a birthday celebration. I, I don't know what it was. <laughs> and the rafting was such an amazing experience. I never thought I would do, but it was so fun. Um, so a little bit about what I've learned. If I put everything that I learned, it would probably be a whole novel. But I'll just tell you about a few things. So the first thing is Cal OSHA. So at school, they really just focus on federal OSHA because Pennsylvania doesn't have a state-run program. So like everything federal OSHA is like shoved down our throats. So coming here and figuring out there was Cal OSHA, it was kind of a learning curve, but it's only different in a few ways. Um, in Cal OSHA, for one, it's a lot more stringent on their regulations and their standards. And they also have a few more extra programs that Federal OSHA doesn't have like the Injury Illness and Prevention Program and also the Heat Illness and Prevention Program. And then with field work, I learned that just having a presence out there is really big and also being spontaneous because if they know when you're gonna show up, they might only wear their PPE or they might only do it in a safe way because they know you're coming so if you show up unannounced, you'll see how they normally work when you're not there. And then just building those relationships with people out in the field is big because if they just think you're being a safety cop and out there telling them what they're doing wrong, then they're obviously not gonna listen to you because you're not trying to build that professional relationship with them. And also just sharing with them the why is really big because they, don't always understand why we're asking them to do certain things or why we're asking them to wear gloves or wear their hard hats. So if we tell them why they should wear it, they're more likely to listen to us if we just say, hey, put that on. And then convenience. So we often lean towards things being more convenient because it's easier and it makes things faster, but with safety, it has to be safety over convenience, not convenience over safety. Because if we're doing things really fast, not really paying attention to what we're doing, not really thinking about it, then that just leads to injuries, and that's obviously what we don't want. And if we just tell them about the short-term or long-term effects that could happen if they're not doing things safely or under regulation, then it shows them why we're doing what we're doing. And because safety is our number one responsibility, we are here to provide them with a safe work environment. And also I learned about 811, um, cause I knew nothing about this before. So I'd always see those random colorful markings on the side of the road and think it's gibberish. But now I know what they mean. And I learned about like how they get an 811 ticket and all the other things you're supposed to do when you're supposed to renew one and all things like that. Oh. Doesn't want to work anymore. Try the mouse. We plan by the end. Say hi to you over at. I took. So this first one is at the first responders building at Fresno. It's one of the confined spaces under the building that they came and sat down. And then this one is a bolt being lifted by a crane at Tule River that they're moving over to set into the ground. And then this is just a um, foundation platform also at first responders. And then this was on the roof at Del Oro, and I'm not gonna lie, but I think Jose was more scared to climb up that ladder than I was. <laughs> um, now about my five biggest takeaways and recommendations. So the first one is confidence. I haven't always been the best at this one, but I am trying to improve it every day. But if you believe in yourself and you're confident in what you're telling the workers out on the field, they're going to see that and they're going to know that 
or they're going to see that you know what you're talking about and that you're knowledgeable on the subject. So just showing your confidence is really big out in the field. Okay. Then experience. So what I learned about this is I don't have to know everything right away, and I'm never going to know everything, like every single thing possible. It's just not how it is. But if I ask questions, if I put myself in a place where I can go to multiple different experiences, I will learn as much as I can. And also just hearing other people's experiences will really help me grow and learn from those. And then feedback. So feedback, whether good or bad, is something that is really beneficial because if we don't get any feedback, we're never going to know if we're doing well, if we're doing bad, or if we're just staying complacent and like plateauing. So if we get feedback, then we can do some introspective thinking, we can self-reflect, and we can um, lead on to improve ourselves and grow. And then number four was the meet and greets. This was um, really great to see everybody's different path that they took to get to where they are, because not everybody went the same way to become successful, to get to the position they're at today. And it just taught me that I don't have to plan my whole life out. I will get where I'm supposed to go, and there's not one right way to get there. And also just all the advice that they gave is, it was so eye-opening and also just, uh, I don't know the right word, but it was just really beneficial to get all the different advice from multiple different people in multiple different positions throughout the company. It just really helped. And then finally, networking. Um, there's a career coach at my university that always says, if you're not networking, you're not working. And it's just really stuck with me because even Michelle said, like, you never know who your future boss is going to be. So just building those professional relationships with anybody you can is really going to help you down the road. Um, because you'll be able to um, share your ideas with them or ask them for their knowledge on a certain topic that you don't know. And also it will just help you get a job later on if you are looking for one. So my only recommendations are that we have more team bonding stuff. So more things like the rafting trip, and keep like doing the intern dinners and the pizza party, things along those lines. Because that was a great way for us to start developing those relationships with one another and just open up and get to know one another. And then with professionalism and branding. So at school, they don't really teach us much about how to be professional or the best way to brand ourselves in the really competitive job market. So if I think if we did more events or little talks about how to be professional, like whether that is what you're wearing or how to talk professional, how to sound professional, and also just the best way to brand ourselves so we can succeed in such a uh, competitive job market. And then I might be a little biased, but I also think we should have more out-of-state interns because if we're all out of state, we'll most likely all live in the same place together, and that's a great way to really connect. And it's also uh, like comforting if they're all from out of state because they have something to bond over. So now, my lead proposal. So the thing that I saw that can be improved is our PPE management system. So we can reduce costs. Um, keep better inventory and also um, help with predisposal of PPE. So my proposal is we get a PPE management app. It's called iAuditor by Safety Culture, and it is on the App Store, so we would be able to get it on the iPads or the company phones. So the safety coordinators, safety department, and foreman would work on this together. and. The data syncs in real time, so we don't have to be on uh, 
data or Wi-Fi to see all the changes that we put into the app. There's also daily PPE tracking and counting. So we know every single day how much we have and when we need to go and get more PPE. It also automatically generates PDF reports each time a PDF inspection is completed. So we don't have to do any converting from like a Word doc to a PDF. It's just automatically going to be a PDF in the app. And so that will save us a lot of time. And then also employees can snap a photo of any defects on their PPE. So if we're not able to get out to that job site and be there in person, we can just look on the app at the inspection checklist and we can see the PPE and make our assessment from that photo. So a few of the features are there's um, the forms, so we can download, customize, and create our own inspection templates and checklists. And so we can see what PPE we have and make those inspection checklists based on the PPE that we have and make them customized to our business. Then there's also QR codes, so we can add our PPE assets into the inspection checklist. And then when we go to do an inspection on the PPE in question, then we can scan the QR code and it brings up that specific inspection checklist for that PPE item. Then there's a marketplace, so we don't have to go to a third party app or website to order our PPE, it's just all going to be on the same app, the inspection, the counting, and also where we buy the PPE. And then there's also geotagging, so we can track and monitor if PPE is being used and if, if it's also in good working order. Then there's also an analytics dashboard, so we can get insights into our PPE, how much we're spending on it, how much we're using at all the different job sites, and also how much we're getting rid of. And then it'll also show us benchmarking performances, so we can see how much we spend on one spend on PPE one year compared to the next, or how much we lost on PPE one year to the next. So the contributions of this, it would have a, it would allow us to have a better analysis of our PPE usage and needs. Also, it would help with the monitoring of PPE distribution so people aren't getting PPE when they don't need to get new ones. And it will just keep PPE in good condition because we're doing our um, maintenance on them, we're doing those inspections to make sure that they're not being thrown away too early. So that helps with premature discarding of PPE that's still in good condition. And then it also will just help us improve PPE spending because we're not spending money on PPE when we have enough already. So it really will just help with a surplus. And then, so we don't buy more PPE than we need and then never use that PPE again. So we do it. Using this, we won't lose as money on our PPE. And that's all I have. Wow, well done. Say that was the worst presentation because that was really good. No, I'm actually myself. Do we okay? My question is do we keep the Facebook Live going while we ask questions or not? Yeah, I say yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, on the chat itself, Michelle, Michelle said, Great job. And Michelle said, I auditor is amazing, great recommendation. And Julie um, said, I agree. So that's um, information from the chat window itself. Thank you. So, I, mean, I have a couple of questions. This is Julie. Oh, sorry. Go, Julie. First of all, I wanted to say, Rachel, great job. Um, really appreciate it. I felt like you were very authentic during your uh, presentation. It was really authentically given, and I, I was able to relate to it as a result, so that was really nice to have that connection piece. Um, the couple of questions that I had is, I, was, I had already written down, how did you feel about Cal OSHA versus OSHA before you addressed that it's just more stringent, but then I got another question in my head, which was, if you were the fairy godmother of all safety, uh, which one do you find, do you, do you believe is a better uh, standard 
that people would follow, Cal OSHA or OSHA and why? Oh, I think people don't want to follow either, but... <laughs> Construction is something that would always keep me busy, always something new. It's not like the same thing every day. And I can also do like traveling with that, so I don't have to stay in one place, especially while I'm young. I can go to like multiple different job sites around the country. So, yeah. um, on your, is one auditor or I auditor? I auditor. On it, did you see that as you mapped it out? We still buying um, all our safety PPE centrally and using that to distribute it, or would people order direct from that? I think that you can just order everything right off the app, like in one place. So we would just be using that to order it, unless people wanted to still order it from like a third party. Okay. Like if something wasn't on there. Had to use something else because it really didn't say what all was on there, but I assume a lot of PPE is on there since it is like a big marketplace. Um, as you looked, you did a great job describing our values. I and worked on that so much. <laughs> and you did a great job. Thank you. And, and you. As you were working through it, did you see anything else missing? Or did you see a value at AC that wasn't on there? that I can think of off the top of my head, but I'm sure there are values that could be added to that really easily. But none are just sticking out to me right off the top of my head. Okay. Um, this will be my last one, so you guys can <laughs> On your silica, silica testing, were we under? Were we within the limits? Or were there changes that have to be made to our process? On the, the one at BC, we were well under, but the one with the cutting in the concrete sidewalk, we were over by quite a bit. I can't give you the specifics, but it was not good. Do you see a solution in that process on how we can do it and not be? Um, definitely have a better, like, 
like wet methods, and there's also certain saws that like have the water come out of it directly while they're saw cutting, so they don't have to have a separate person like manually wetting it down. So I, I think. So when you go back to college, if um, would you be recommending this internship to others? Oh, definitely. Is it worth us going back there? I think so. Definitely. I have a question from um, in Teams chat, and it's from Joe Alexander. What is one takeaway from this internship that you have gotten but does not deal with safety? Just trying to make relationships with anyone that you can is the best thing you can do to help yourself professionally and just have more people around you in your personal life. So it's always trying to make connections. Jennifer messaged me. She has six questions for you. <laughs> show like all of our accomplishments so like our TR, IR score, also that we're a vet is certified and that we have an A score, um, have some testimonials on there, like what our safety department is looking to accomplish and also our goals are some things that I added to it while also mm -hmm. keeping like what was already on the website currently, so just adding a few extra things on there to make mm -hmm. it more inviting, I guess. Yeah. Neat. How about your, um, I'm going to ask the Caroline question, you know, the question where um, um, at the meet and greet, she will ask everyone what they would ask their younger selves or what advice they would give their younger selves. I'm curious, which one really resonated with you the most out of all the meet and greets you've done? I think the one that Julie said. Or? I can't remember uh, what exactly. Do you recall what it was? But like, don't either don't, it was like something like don't be so hard on yourself or love yourself more. And it's something along those lines. That was it. Yeah, they would love yourself more. Yeah, that's so cool. Okay. How about your most memorable aspect of uh, extreme ownership? Did you like that book? And if so, what memorable aspect? Yes, I liked that book a lot better than <laughs> The Seven Habits. I just felt like it was more easy to read. <laughs> but I think the one where it said, don't like let your ego or be working towards something only for your personal gain. Like you have to think of the whole team. Mm. It's one that really stuck with me. Yeah. 
Nicely done. Very, very good. Thank you. Thank you. What do you wish you had more of for, for your internship? If you could go back and change stuff around, what, do you, what would you want more of? More of and less of. I mean, I wish I could see multiple, like, a ton of different job sites. Like, I know that we only have so many projects, but, like, I guess more diverse projects. But obviously, since we're, like, electrical, we're only going to see so much. But, yeah, so I guess more job sites. Um, less of... I don't think there's really anything that I'd rather have less of. What was one realization you made that made you go, oh, I'm really going to like being a safety professional, if there was one? Other than working with Bob. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think I just like sharing what I know with others and also just like guiding them how to do something the right or safe way. I think that's something I'm really going to like. Was there an experience you had where you were like, oh, maybe that safe, being a safety professional isn't for me? Was there any type of doubt in your educational choice so far? Uh, sometimes, <laughs> but... <laughs> What was your favorite part of the internship? That you, well, in, what, in the sense of what you were doing for in safety itself. I think just going out in the field and talking with all the workers, like asking them what they're doing or why they're doing it a certain way, just seeing how it all works out in the field because I had never been on a job site before I came here. So just seeing how everything's actually run all the different duties that foremen have and all the workers have um, was really cool to see. How about the one thing that you procrastinated during the internship? Cassandra said, who is your fav favorite safety person? <laughs> LOL, just kidding. <laughs> Obviously, her. <laughs> Obviously, her. She's going to miss me when I'm gone. She'll be so lonely back there. But I told her I was going to call her every day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just during lunch. Yeah. Do you remember what the piping inside of walls is called that wires run through? Uh, oh God. M, M, no, that's another one. The other oh. one. It starts with a C. I was going to say. We talked about it a lot. Condiment? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that didn't know anything about conduit. I'm like, I know that's just electrical, but I never knew what it was. Do like pre-markings of where you want to dig so when they come they can see those 
and then they'll have um, a person from 811 come out and they'll do they'll do their thing and find all the underground utilities and that they mark it so when you're digging underground you know um, where all your utilities are and all the different colors stand for like a different type of utility yeah. so you know like if it's water and it's um, telecommunication line like things like that okay cool. yeah. um, Christian asked did you have to fill out any USA tickets I did not have to fill out any no okay Michelle um, asked, Rachel, you talked a lot about building rapport. Who was someone outside of safety that you built a great relationship? Well, like just anyone in the company? I'm assuming that's okay. correct. <laughs> um, probably Caroline. We talked a lot and like we even hung out like outside of work. So she's probably the person I built the best relationship with since being here. And then... The next question Michelle said is, and what value did they bring to your internship experience? Uh, she was just really encouraging and always helped me when I needed help. Joe asked, uh, what is your favorite intern event that we had? Example, dinners, rafting, book club, meet and greets. Uh, definitely the rafting. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of fun. I got to jump off a giant rock again. Great time. Even though our boat almost <laughs> fell over once. We were like this. But none of us fell out, so I was proud of us. No, none of us fell out. <laughs> <laughs> we were proud of ourselves. Jasmine asks, how do you think we should connect with your college to get more interns or talent candidates aware of us? We need a dash C electric. So our university uses Handshake a lot. Um, it's just a place where the university posts internships, jobs, like, and they're always sending emails out. Like the um, chairperson of safety, he sends out like job openings and internship openings like every day, like about ones that are posted on Handshake. So. That would probably be the best way or just reaching out to like the chairperson of a specific department okay and then cassandra asks what does the white stand for in 811 <laughs> that's the mark that's like the marking that the whatever you, the whatever the person you want to call it marks with that's like your pre dig mark Proposed excavation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell you what yellow is. Yellow is gas. <laughs> Any other questions? Sure. I have one for you. Hit me with it. As somebody who sets up most of the meetings with the interns, what is something that you would propose that we did more? I mean, I like the dinners, so I think if we did like a set day every week to do the dinners, even though that might be kind of hard with if there's like people remote like how Sam and Christian were. But I think that or like having plan like a weekend day for more yeah relationship building yeah like we don't have to go on some fancy fancy trip just hang out on the weekend go somewhere like plan a day do stuff all together cool so Jennifer says movie and swim night at the Alexander sounds like a great idea <laughs> yeah I mean Bring the blow up. <laughs> 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 Not for you, you want to ask you a question, 
If you have any. If not, I'm okay with that too. I did tell Rachel um, she graduates uh, in. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I told Rachel she graduates in December, and I said, you know, she did a really, really good job for, for AC, and she's more than welcome to come back um, and work as a safety coordinator in one of our projects we have coming up. So yeah, I told her if not, then I'd like to help her in the future with any other opportunities. So she has a re really bright future ahead of her, that's for sure. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, everybody, for attending. Yeah. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Woo! Any last thoughts? I don't think so. You guys have. Thank you, everybody, for attending, and have a great day.